welcome to the channel. Hope you're having a fantastic day. Today, we're going to talk about a new IPO that's launching on May 17th. We're going to go through their SEC filings and, and understand whether this is something that we should be investing in or we should be avoiding at all costs. The ticker is going to be uh, OKYL, and the company name is Okio Pharma Limited. And I'm going to go through their SEC filing in detail. So, you know, their financial statement, their revenue, uh, what, the, what are the risks involved in this, and, you know, and talk about the whole thing, okay? So let's talk about the company first. What is this company, right? Okio Pharma Limited, a biopharmaceutical company focused on developing an, an innovative approach to dry eye care and ocular pain. Okay, so they're working on actually they're working on a drug for the dry eye and ocular pain. And for the dry eye medication they're working on, currently it's it's going to go to phase two. Uh, they recently filed their IND. Uh, which is going to establish, you know, their studies and, you know, they could move forward for the next phase, which is going to be anticipated in quarter four. OK, so these are the drugs they have outlined. And again, it's a startup company. So let's talk about how many shares they will be launching on, uh, uh, on, on the offering day. Right. So they said we estimated that the net proceed of our sales of ADS is in the offering will be approximately one point eight million approximately 2.2 million if the underwriter exercise their overall amount in full so the ipo price is going to be four dollars and 92 cents per ads now what ads is basically if you're a foreign company trying to trade in us it's called american depository shares so each eds is going to have approximately four shares and the four uh, they call it ordinary shares in the uk uh, so basically each ed ads is going to have four ordinary shares and it the Ordinary shares price is about one dollar twenty three cents, but when you would go ahead and buy the stock, it's going to cost you four dollars and ninety two cents. Okay, so let's talk about their financials, right? So currently, the cash, cash and equivalents assets they have is about five point one million. Total interest bearing is about five hundred five hundred thirty five thousand, and equity, um, the total stockholders equity is about four point nine million. Okay, now the balance sheet. Um, it's, um, if you see the balance sheet looks not that terrible, the balance sheet it looks okay. So the cash flow they have research and development expenses about four, four point, you know, 479,000. General administrative expenses about 2.2 million. Operating losses 2.7 million. Now the operating loss is 2.7, which means they're, again, the, the whole fundamental about this IPO is they're trying to offer their stock to the public. So this way they can go ahead and raise the money and do their finish up their uh, risk, you know, their uh, development that they're doing the drugs. So 2.7 million is operating loss. So they're not making any money right now. Uh, this is very clear from their financials. All right. Loss before tax to 2.7. So uh, all are, uh, on a summary level, it would be net loss is about 2.5 million, which means they're not they're They don't have any cash on hand like they're literally losing money. And let's talk about the risk. OK, what risks they have? Uh, put out there in the sec filing okay we have only what they're saying is we have only recently committed to our new business and our product candidates are in the early stages of development and maybe it may be some years until we gen generate revenue if at all right if at all means like there is not guaranteed that they will generate any revenue but if they do they, it's not going to be this year that is what they're trying to tell you here our product candidates have not been evaluated in clinical trials and results in clinical results in the clinical may not be reproduced in human trials. Okay, so they're still very early stages of their drug development. Uh, there's a high degree of failure for the product candidates as they uh, progress through clinical trials, and clinical trials data may be interrupted in varying ways, which may delay, limit, prevent, or future regulatory approvals. What they're essentially saying is, uh, whatever clinical trials they go through, there's no guarantee that it will succeed and, you know, there's no guarantee that it will move forward, okay? The development of pharmaceutical products carries significant risk of failure in early uh, and late stages of development program. But what they're saying is, trying to tell you is that when you have this new uh, pharma stock launching, there's always a significant risk because you, you there's no guarantee that drug is going to go and make it, make it to the, you know, public, okay? And they'll be able to sell the drug and make some money. Um, also, what they're saying is we anticipate that we will continue to incur significant losses for the foreseeable future. So they know that, you know, as I said, we went to their cash flow and they are not in positive, they're negative. So they're saying that, you know, yeah, they understand that. So there is a possibility that you can be keep on uh, getting. They also list down a lot of different, um, you know, all, all the number of different uh, factors, which I'm not going to go through because I don't want to make the video 10 minutes long. And we're going to come to a conclusion in a second. Uh, one other thing, this is uh, that the other thing happens with these new stocks, the IPOs. You got to watch out for liquidation, immediate. It's called diluted liquidation. Okay, you got to worry about that. 
what happens is when these companies launch an IPO, right, and their financials are not that strong, essentially the stock opens up and immediately starts shifting downwards, okay, because of the fact that there's a lot of internal employees that have, let's say, have owned the stock or they got it as a bonus, et cetera, et cetera, they will start selling the stock immediately because they know the stock is not going to sustain the growth and you will have the immediate dilution of the stock immediately, right? So um, with that being said, you know, uh, coming back to the point with the risk and the financials, balance sheet looks okay. However, they're not profitable. So I don't think the stockholders equity is going to hold any value here in terms of you know how this is going to sustain the four dollar ninety two cents. Now, only way you could potentially make money is probably shorting the stock, but I'm not recommending anything here. Uh, this is just uh, you know uh, my personal opinion. If somebody's you know going for the IPO, I think the best <laughs> they could do is probably short it, and then just generally you know when you short the stock, you're selling the stock uh, because you anticipate the stock is going to go down. But uh, yeah, it's it's a no go for me. Um, I just want to put it out there for you guys. I think their financials. It just doesn't worth the risk in terms of how much money, you know, we're going to put in. I don't know how much money, maybe, you know, institutional banks will put in some money and I'll make a video about it if how this goes. But, uh, but you know, I think essentially the, the, the fate of the stock is, is essentially going down there. They don't have anything to back it up. This looks like a small company, a uh, very, very small company. And the, the amount they're trying to raise is about six million or so uh, dollar wise. So, yeah, I mean, you know, just my quick video for today. It's a no go for me. I'm not going to advise you to do whatever, you know, to buy, sell or hold. At the end of the day, this is your, you know, how you want to move forward with it. You know, essentially when the day the stock launches, if there's a flow that stock is going to take off and, and you could ride the flow, I would ride the flow for that day. But on the long term, I wouldn't really uh, invest in it so much that it essentially will lose a lot of money because you'll either it could go up after you know when they finish the trial two in quarter two, quarter three in 2022 or it might never go at all right so quarter four 22 excuse me phase two is quarter four so maybe you'll see some spikes at that time frame but but essentially it's a no-go hope you guys like this video if you did do give it a thumbs up and if you're not subscribed please do consider subscribing i release video every day of the, and the objective here is to get you guys information and something useful that, you know, maybe you, you can use and, and, you know, invest. So talk to you guys in the next video.